So here we are, starting a uh, uh, battle cruiser Millennium Gold Edition. There is a uh, newer version of the game on Steam called Universal Combat uh, Collector Edition, um, which uh, works. Uh, quite well in Windows and has much updated graphics as well as much better support for um, joysticks among other improvements. It does have a few changes in uh, the uh, layout and the uh, some of the key combinations are different but overall it plays essentially um, the same. I do like the uh, Battle Cruiser Millennium version of the game um, a bit more, possibly because I'm more familiar with it, but I just find it uh, just uh, just as fun. In any case, um, this is not a tutorial per se on how to play Battle Cruiser Millennium, but rather a demonstration of uh, a typical gaming session with it. I will not go over um, the keystrokes or the menus in detail. I assume that you've read the manual. Um, so um, this would kind of demonstrate what uh, these menus look like and how the game plays in general. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new game. And um, why don't we pick an empty slot here and let's call it uh, let's see John Doe. Okay, so it's a male Terran military. This is my preference. I usually like to play the Terran and military cast. You can play anything you want. You have multiple choices, obviously, here. Um, each one has its advantages and disadvantages. Um, commander is the most interesting uh, carrier because you get to command the big fat ships, uh, which is nice. Um, and you can also do uh, first person plays. Uh, you know, including piloting fighters and shuttles and ATVs and things like that, as well as going and running around the planet on foot. So really it gives you a taste of pretty much everything. So there's really little sense to try other uh, carriers, except maybe for fighter pilot where, um, you know, if you, if you really want to jockey around in a fighter, that may be something you might want to do. Um, so our launch base is the uh, Galactic Command HQ. Uh, which is on, in orbit around the Earth um, and we're going to be commanding a heavy carrier. You have multiple choices but uh, the heavy carrier is a good start and a good balance between crew numbers and uh, amenities. And your S-type is a battle cruiser Mark III and we're going to name it uh, the USS Trial. All right, and we are in the roaming assignment. You can also play the campaign. Um, I kind of dislike the campaign. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just that I don't like to be directed to do things. Um, this is an open universe, and uh, you know the whole fun of it is to actually be able to explore and deal with the different situations you come up with. All right, so we'll go ahead and accept. And here you get your statistics, um, your name, age, I'm 35 years old, that's great, I wish I was. <laughs> um, and uh, primarily you want to look at your finances, you have currently 75,000 credits, your salary is also 75,000 credits, so every year you get that amount, or every month I should say. I'm not sure if it's every month, every year, but time moves kind of slowly in this game. Um, your total inventory value that you're carrying is currently 2,386,000 credits. That's a lot, but most of it really is something you need for the functioning of the ship, so it's not something you can really trade readily. Um, you have no experience points, you're docked, and this is the current time um, and date. Yeah, this is uh, April 4th, 3010 at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You have no medals as you new start, and these are the, um, the this is the crew that you have on board. You have 20 marines, you have 10 medics, 10 flight engineers, 10 system engineers, 8 combat pilots, and 9 um, senior command personnel. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and log out, and the game will start. Alright, so we are in orbit uh, around the Earth when we start, um, and 
uh, let's uh, first adjust the map here. Zoom to 8. This is the Earth here. And you have the different uh, um, jump points to different planets. Um, and uh, one thing you want to do when you start is uh, go into your logistics module and power down the launch control and the transporter control. And the reason for that um, is if you do get intruders on board, that way they cannot steal a shuttle or transport themselves out of the ship. They do like to steal shuttles, and once they steal it, then you lose that shuttle. It's very hard to replace, so better to just keep your launch control off until you need it to launch fighters or shuttles. Um, also, when the game starts, it doesn't give you full power for the auxiliary life support for some reason. I'm sorry, for the engine and for the solar reactor. You want to maximize those. Okay. Power allocation is offline. Right. Deployment so, operations our delayed. shields currently at 100% uh, power. I'm going to switch them off. Shields lowered. Um, simply because they consume a lot of plutonium. And plutonium is expensive, so you want to save that um, for later. If you go into your... Uh, logistics again and you look at your cargo and your normal minerals and scroll down you will see that your plutonium is 98 you have 98 units of plutonium and radine 999 radine is what is used by the hyperdrive and you want to go through that fairly quickly so this is the number you want to keep an eye on along with the plutonium in order to not run out and be stranded because flying in this universe uh, with the regular engine is just painfully slow and if you're millions of kilometers away from your destination, well, you're in for a long wait. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and decide what we're going to do here. Well, um, let's see. We're going to set a destination. Let's go into the Navitron. Activate a Navitron computer. And we're currently here. Let's say we want to go to the Centris uh, planet in the Alpha Centauri uh, system. Um, a uh, red planet indicates that it has a uh, um, a planet with star station and a star base. Uh, green planets are only have only a star station. Blue planets have nothing. Um, so blue planets are not terribly helpful. Um, whereas uh, green planets and red planets um, are mostly helpful because they have star station where you can supply and trade. Okay, let's go back up to where we were. So here we are. So we'll set the destination to Centris. So let's say Centris Alpha Centauri. And we're going to go ahead. And we can see it's two jump points to get there. Let me go back here and show you something. Activate uh, so uh, from Earth, in order to get to Centris, we have to, the closest way to do it is to go to Pluto. And then from Pluto, um, go to centers. So we now have two jump points here. All right. Earth it's left from nav coordinates. So we start the um, autopilot. Hyperdrive activated. And it will basically go through the maneuvers to get us to the uh, centers uh, planet. Um, now we're not going to go there straight. What we're going to do is um, we're going to drop a shuttle in Pluto to, to and uh, start mining Pluto. Um, as you move progress further away from Earth, you want to set, set up uh, some mining drones in order to be able to uh, collect some minerals which you can trade for either credits or uh, other items um, that you may need along the way, particularly radine and plutonium among other things. Um, so. Uh, this is going to be important Warning. to kind of strike. Okay, well we are in hyperspace, so you know anything out there is not likely to do anything for us. Um, these are further out. This one is in front of us, but how far is it? Well, it's coming pretty quick here, so let's raise shields just to be able to save some. Raising shields. And it's targeted. Weapon systems um, activated. Star lands. So here we go. Missiles here. All right. And it's in here, so it's coming pretty quick here. But we are still have a hyperspace. This is just a precautionary measure. Um, this is a. Uh, hmm. 
Okay, we'll see what happens here. We're getting pretty close pretty quickly. The missiles will fire automatically when they are in range, but not when you're in hyperspace. So you'll have to come out of hyperspace first. So this seems to be a smack where we need it to be, so it's probably trying to get into to the gate. Um, no. Yeah. It's not Emerging good. from hyperspace. I'm going to take power off. We're going to go increase our speed. Let's see where that sucker is here. I don't want him in my back. Alright, so what's the range here? So he's closing in, so let's keep our missiles on him. Okay, he's being hit by something. You can see his shield going down, so yeah, he's getting hit definitely by uh, some of the uh, my support teams. So we may not make it there in time before he actually gets destroyed, which is fine by me, but in case not, his shields are down, so any further hits we're going to go up to his uh, hull, and that's going to be pretty bad for him, bad news. His shields are not regenerating, so he must have significant damage to his shields. So we'll keep him in, um, in sight. Now one thing about, you know, piloting carrier is that, um, you know, joysticks are pretty useless because you're not going to be uh, dogfighting with the carrier. Um, it's just too heavy and too slow for that. Um, you just want to try to maneuver within reason. Joysticks are only useful. Missile launched. Okay, so, Missile missiles are launched. so there they are. We're in range. Let's see. We should be able to destroy him because he had very little um, hull integrity left. So there he goes. He's dead. All right, so we fired two missiles, so we need to keep Warning track of... acquired. All right, so why don't we resume our autopilot here and get back to Pluto. Our hyperdrive is up, so we're going to go to the gate. So we did move further away from the jump gate, so it's going to take me back. It's going to take me back to that. So gate is down here. And we'll jump through the gate and then we'll have another jump um, to Centrus, but like I said, we're going to stop at Pluto and actually drop a, uh, a shuttle. So I'm going to go ahead and lower my shields again, save up on the Pluto. Shield lowered. And here's the jump gate. Warning, acquired. Okay, well, we're going to jump. Retrieving data. Okay, so here's the next uh, system, which is the wormhole. But we're going to stop here. And we're going to look at the map. And we're going to see we are... Um, where are we here? We are in the Pluto system, so we need to find Pluto. Here's Pluto. That's a comet. There's Pluto. It's about 437,000 kilometers away, so we definitely need the hyperdrive for that. So the hyperdrive is recharging here. Once it's it's 100, we can hyperdrive to it. In the meantime, we can just kind of center blue on the uh, in the system. Um, so we we'll wait for the hyperdrive to come up. In the meantime, why don't we go to our tactical activating manual. tactical computer? And let's send one of the Marines to the shuttle. That's off to the shuttle one. This guy will start trying his way towards the shuttle. You can see if you go into the first scan menu. Um, and here's our guy who decided to um, this is shuttle one. And he's currently still in his two corridor. Oh, here. He moved to deck one, aft corridor. And so you can actually follow his, uh, his movements uh, throughout if you're so inclined. But eventually he'll get to the shuttle. And once he does, um, the shuttle one will turn light green, indicating that it is crewed and ready. Um, the other thing we we'll probably want to do once we're ready to launch is to activate the launch control, power it up th through the logistics uh, system. 
in order to be able to launch the, the shuttle. Alright, so here, turn light green. So if you check your crew, we have a Marine number 11 in there. So we're set. I'm just gonna. Okay, so we are fully charged on the hyperdrive. So shift 9 will take us. I'm not gonna do a plan with follow. So. Inputting navigation coordinate, gauging hyperdrive profile. There Sideways instead of straight to Pluto, even though I have Pluto targeted here. I'm not sure if I did something funky or. Oh, thing too. That's what happened here. Darn it. I'm still set up for the Alpha Centauri system. Uh, okay, so it's probably taking me to the jump point. Okay. I didn't, I forgot to clear the. Uh, the waypoints. I'm still we're going to waypoint number two here. So let's clear the navigation route. And now we're going to Pluto, but it you can't stop a hyper jump until the hyperdrive is uh, discharged. So we can't really change directions. If we try, if we go back to Pluto in there, you'll see that we're actually moving sideways, backward. So. This is our direction of movement currently. So as you can see, we're quite off. But anyway, once the hyperdrive discharges, we'll be able to refocus on Pluto. But we wasted some uh, radar in here. We should be getting close to the uh, to the jump gate here to Centris, which we don't want to use just yet. That's actually the wormhole. Take us Emerging to from hyperspace. All right, so we're out of hyperspace. So let's get out of here. This Pluto is still targeted. There's there something out there. Yes. <laughs> that's So either they got destroyed or they dropped. Anywho, not a problem. Not my problem anyway at this point. So in this game, when you're playing the Rome scenario, really things happen whether you do something or not. Um, and um, the way I like to do it is um, you know, I jump from place to place, I explore, I trade. And um, you know, if I get into trouble, I either choose to fight um, or I can escape, try to escape anyway. Um, or cloak, or whatever, depending on my status and uh, my supplies, etc. If I'm There's damaged, out there. Um, I tend to try to find this quiet place somewhere in the galaxy and try to recover from the damages, repair as much as I can. And uh, from there, um, you know, come back and continue. So the hyperdrive is fully charged. Let's go back. Unable to, to compute jump profile. Mm, why not? Where is Pluto? Oh, I did not target Pluto. Here we are. Nope, we're not going to do that. Okay. Inputting so navigation now we're course, engaging hyperdrive profile. We're going to go in and we're gonna jump. So here, uh, as you notice, um, if you try to go these uh, distances without a hyper jump, you could be spending a lot of time. Even though you can go uh, about 1900 kilometers an hour or something like that, uh, that's not nearly fast enough to cover these distances in a reasonable amount of time. I mean, you could, but you may want to leave your computer on for a number of days or weeks, depending where you're going. Um, something most of us are probably not inclined to do. Um, that's why we're doing this. Let's check our radine level. I'm going to go sticks, cargo, mineral, minerals, and radine. So we're down to 802. As I said, it does consume quite a bit. 
but we turn this down to 88 because we fused our shields so right now shields are at zero power even though they're charged a little bit but there's still there's no power to recharge them if we need them there's always a residual charge will provide you with some uh, protection at least if you are caught off guard okay so we're getting close to Pluto here uh, you know the images of the planets are not bad at least the solar system Pluto of course when this game was made did not have um, any uh, images other than some blurry images from the uh, uh, from the Hubble Space Telescope and so it's completely imaginary as far as what the surface looks like um, you know if this game was made you know say in 2017 then it should have had an updated uh, map of the planet anywho it doesn't really matter I mean it's still an ice ball regardless of how you look at it so when we come into orbit to any planet, we get within 150 kilometers, and then we stop. And Emerging from hyperspace. You can do a planet fall, in which case you basically um, uh, try to get as close to the surface as possible. Usually with a craft like a supercarrier, you're not going to land, you cannot land, you destroy your plane, your ship will heavily damage it. So you probably hover around like 10,000 uh, meters or so, uh, or kilometers. Anyway, all right, so we're now in orbit around Pluto. So why don't we go ahead and send a shuttle. So the first thing we want to do is activate our launch system, which is this power and get launch system on. Okay. All right. Too far away actually, they're moving in close. Okay, let's get our shields up here just to be safe. Raising shields. With three enemies. Oh boy, that's quite a bit of there's a missile coming out here. So now the shuttle is launched and uh, you can follow 
the shuttle. Uh, that's here anyway. Um, once it gets closer to the surface, we can see we'll be able to zoom in on it and uh, see what it's doing. But in the meantime, what you can do, you can hover over its number and you'll see that um, it's about 26. Oops, what's going on? Logistics and get the power off just to be careful. Here. Uh, 
Attacking us, my shields have been going up. Well, I guess get some missile action here. This is a Viper. Where are you? And you are on a sad mission. Both are on a sad. It's not the one. Try this one. Target acquisition. some action here, we're distracted by the shuttle, we had some hit on our shield but our health integrity and our armor are intact so we didn't sustain any damage. The one way to find out is to go into the tactical, Activating tactical computer. Um, I'm sorry, into an uh, logistics and go into crafts and your main craft and then you can go through the decks and anything damaged will appear yellow and we we're pretty clear here. Assigning medics to tend to injured personnel. What's going on here? So we still have an intruder. Um, we have a minor injury for one of the medics. Another one. So this guy must be close to the medibay. So not a lot of people searching. So let's go ahead and set up a few more searching. Uh, Activating tactical computer. Marines, get up your ass and search. These will have valuable minerals that you can trade at other stations, etc. Okay. Okay, let's see if we still have that intruder on board. Yeah. So he hasn't been found yet, so we don't have a location. Once they find him, it'll show up where he's at, and then uh, the Marines will converge on him. So right now, we have a few searching still. Eventually, they'll find him. So I'm not too worried, it's only one. Sometimes they can go damage the system, so uh, we'll keep an eye on that. In the meantime, we can go ahead and um, go to the Navitron. Activate Navitron computer. We set center as our destination. There we are, center cell for Centauri. And there it is. From Nav coordinates. The Marines are engaged in combat on deck three. Hyperdrive so activated. The pilot. Jump to that wormhole, which will take us all the way to Centrus. Uh, I'm gonna power down my, uh, my shields. Here, lowered. Some plutonium again. And let's see what's going on on the first scan. So we have a marine that's the hit. Then we'll send this guy to Medi Bay. It's a bit on the lower. So you don't want to lose your marines because you cannot clone them. Once they're lost, they're lost. Um, so he went off duty automatically, but I want him to go to Medibay, so let's go. Activating tactical, tactical computer. Marines. And this 
guy over this Eddie Bay get some help. Let's put some more people on search here. That, that sucker, nothing the intruder, seems to be really uh, hiding. Okay, I'm gonna get the Marine out of Shell 1, and at this point, we don't need him in there. Activating tactical computer. So, this one, let's get to searching as well. So, there's a lot of micromanagement happening here. Um, and, uh, it's important to keep an eye on things when you're playing this game because you can. There are a lot of things that can happen at the same time. The good news is once you access menus, everything pauses, so you have time to think and uh, decide on the next course of action without actually panicking. And one way to pause the game, actually, if you get into uh, sensory overload or just too many things happening, is just to go into your any of the menu systems and everything will pause, so you can just stay there and gonna assess the situation a little bit and then decide on a course of action. When you're out of the menu then things resume. So that's a nice feature. It gives you a little leeway here. Alright, so we're getting close to that uh, wormhole. Pretty neat graphic actually of that. Let's see where our intruder is. Oh, he's dead. You can see he's gone here. And we have only one minor casualty of uh, minor injuries. Emerging to from hyperspace. Medics. Oh, here's our wormhole. So our autopilot's still on, so it's going to take us through the wormhole down to the center system. I'm going to get my shields up because you don't ever know what's on the Raising other side. Raising shield. Retrieving data. So we are officially in the Alpha Centauri system. Let's go into the map, see what we've got here. So this is Centris, and it's, let's get our autopilot off. Right here. So why don't we head over there once our hyperdrive recharges, and we can send a mining drone down there as well, so why don't we go and send one of the marines. Activating tactical computer. We can actually put these guys back on station while we're at it. and zero fatigue factor as gets you to shell three two. We can't do shell one now because the drone is deployed already. So shell two is the next one we can use. Alright, so our hyperdrive is still charging here. Our fighters are on the ready it's shell. Let's see if our launch control is powered up. Nope. So I'll leave it off for now until we're closer. the system. Mm, no shields are charged but I don't think they're powered. Oh yeah they are. Well, there's nothing in the system so I'll power them down. Shield lowered. So hyperdrive is charged. Let's go ahead and so we'll establish planet fall this time so let's say uh, actually, no, this may have an atmosphere. It could be pretty bad for us. No. Hyperdrive um, You have to be careful. Um, hyperdrive you try to planet fall with the uh, uh, carrier, um, it's not really designed for atmospheric flight, and you can sustain severe damage or even blow up. So it looks like this is a uh, planet with an atmosphere. I'm not sure, but uh, what's going on? What is that? How far are you? Not too far. She gets up. 
raising shield. Okay, we can't stop the hyperdrive once it's on, so I need to make sure. So 
this guy is gonna die with just one blow, assuming he get there on time. Let's see where we are at. Okay, we are really he's disabled. So and you can see I think his one missile is gonna do him. Almost there. So. We are running low on plutonium. Yeah, I know, I know. That's the problem. Emerging So our missiles went at it. The minute they got in range. And we're gonna see him blow up. Hopefully. Let's give him another missile. Target destroyed. Okay, so there we are. So let's go back uh, to Centris. Here we are. And we're going to wait for our hyperdrive to recharge. In any case, so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, I've sent the probe to Centris, uh, I mean a mining uh, drone to Centris, and then continue to explore the galaxy. So you get the idea about fighting, traveling, mining, etc. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that uh, demo. And uh, um, maybe I'll have another one at some point. All right, let's exit. Thank you for watching.